I made a full Cambridge style guest paper for probability and statistics one for October November 2024 which comes together with a Cambridge style marking scheme and I'm also going to go through some of my predictions on the questions that I expect to come in the October series. So make sure to like the video and subscribe for more guest papers. Let's get into it. If you haven't watched my prediction video for Pure One, which also has the Pure One guest paper for October November 2024, make sure to check that out first. But anyways, looking at stats one, let's start off with the first topic, representation of data. Now for this topic we have four different data visualizations that you must know in the stem and leaf diagram, box and whisker plot, cumulative frequency graphs and histograms. And we also have a coded data question in there. In all fairness, you probably should learn how to work with all the different data visualizations, but Cambridge is probably going to only bring one of them in October, and I think I know which one it is. If we look at the data, you notice something pretty interesting. In the June 2023 Variant 2 paper, we got a stem and leaf plot that led into a box and whisker plot. And I don't know if this is a coincidence, but in the same paper, in June 2024, we got the exact same question, a stem and leaf plot that led to a box and whisker plot. But these are June papers, so you'd think this information isn't useful to us, except I think it is. In the June 2024 series, Cambridge repeated some of the questions from the June 2023 series. What stops them from doing the same in the October series? To be fair though, this is probably just coincidence but I still believe that in October, just like last year, we're probably going to get a histogram and or a cumulative frequency graph. Not only because of the coincidence, but because Cambridge generally doesn't seem to like to bring the same representation from the previous series. So we had stem and leaf plots in June which makes them less likely to come in October. But just make sure you know all your representations of data. In the permutations and combinations topic, I came across a rather peculiar statistic. So this topic splits into three, we have arrangements, permutations and combinations. In the past two years, we haven't had a permutations question. And look, I get it, arrangements are technically permutations, but if we take them out of the picture, there hasn't been a pure permutations question in 2023 or 2024. And to tell you the truth, I don't think this changes in October. From this topic, I do expect an arrangements question to come, given that, among others, this is the most dominant question in stats one. As for combinations, I expect them to come, but not necessarily in the way you'd expect. I'll explain what I mean when we get to probability. But yeah, for this topic, expect an arrangement to come. As for probability, I hate this topic with a passion. I mean when I'm doing these data analysis because everything from this topic up until the normal distribution is technically all probability and there are very slim margins between these topics so it's not fun to analyze at all but nevertheless we'll still look at it. I've split this topic into about four questions, the basic probability question, the independent events question, tree diagrams and conditional probability question. And the fourth one, which ties back to combinations, we'll look at that in a bit. Generally, in this topic, the most dominant question is the tree diagram and conditional probability question, which has appeared in nine of the last 11 papers. So be prepared for this one, because sometimes it does come with a fair few amount of marks. And yes, it's in the guest paper, which we'll talk about later. Independent events, I don't like its chances. Given that its last scene is in one of the 2023 October papers, and for basic probability you should just know it, because it will creep up into almost every question. Now remember when I said combinations could come, but not in the traditional sense. If you go to your syllabus under probability, there's an objective that states that you should be able to evaluate probabilities by calculation using permutations or combinations. It seems in recent times Cambridge have been having fun with this question because it has appeared in almost every paper from October last year up until June of this year 
And I don't think Cambridge are done playing around with this question. So I do think that in the November series, you will probably have a probability question that will require you to use either permutations or combinations to solve it. But the underlying concept here will pretty much just be permutations and or combinations. So just make sure you master that and you should be fine. Moving on to discrete random variables, there's not much to say here. It splits very nicely into the probability distribution table, the binomial distribution, and the geometric distribution questions. Cambridge always tries to fit all the distributions in the paper, so expect the binomial and geometric distributions to show up. The probability distribution table is expected to show up as well, given its perfect attendance record in the past two years. Discrete random variables is kinda like the series of stats one because every question type from this topic will probably show up in the exam. Finally, we have the normal distribution. Something about this topic surprised me. Given that the stats one paper is only out of 50 marks, you wouldn't expect a 5 mark question to show up in pretty much every paper since 2023, given that this would limit Cambridge's flexibility with the questions. But it seems they did it anyway. The normal approximation question, which always carries 5 marks, has appeared in all of the last 10 papers, yes, with 5 marks. So expect it to come, prepare for it, because the data suggests that those who mastered this question might be in for a treat. And on a side note, this is the only approximation you use at AS level, so don't think too hard when a question asks you to use a suitable approximation. Apart from this, I also have a bit of a hunch that we could also get the find the estimates of the mean and standard deviation question, the one that also comes with 5 marks, so prepare for that as well. Then the textbook normal distribution question, I couldn't find a better name for it, it's coming, and I'd like to assume that most of you are comfortable with it because it embodies the very basics of the normal distribution. Now, before I tell you how to access the guest paper, I want to list some of the questions that I think you should give extra focus to, given that they have a very high likelihood of coming. So the list is as follows. Cumulator frequency graphs, histograms, arrangements, probability using permutations or combinations, tree diagrams and conditional probability, the whole of discrete random variables, the find the mean and standard deviation question, and the normal approximation question. If you want the guest paper, it's available on my website, and it comes with a Cambridge style marking scheme. It's pretty much the exam before the exam. So make sure to check that out if you want an unfair advantage going into the October-November exams. For schools who are interested in using our guest papers or would like us to create their mock papers, feel free to fill in the form on our website and we will assist you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can use the discount code Smile Student Guest Paper to get 50% off on the guest paper. Link is in the description. The Pure 3 guest paper is coming next week, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you.